Yeah, thank you. So I'm super excited to tell you all how we're using Spark Streaming and Delta Live tables to accelerate our KPMG compliance for real-time IoT insights, right? Um, so really quickly, my name is McGregor Weingard. I'm an associate data engineer at KPMG. I've been on our modern data platform team for about six or seven months now. Uh, I do a lot of work managing our data pipelines and infrastructure uh, in, in Databricks, supporting uh, various dashboards across Tableau and Power BI, as well as managing all of our cloud infrastructure in Terraform. So why do you need a modern data platform, right? At KPMG, we're working with companies of all sizes and shapes, right? And we see a lot of companies that implement a modern data platform really well, and we definitely you know, see some where there's a reason that they're coming to us for help, right? I think a lot of their struggles can be kind of summed up into two more major categories. The first being that they don't have the data they need, right? They maybe don't have the right quality data. They're not getting it as quickly as they need to. They don't have the verification checks in place to go ahead and make sure everything's you know, correct. Or maybe they just don't even know what data they need, so they're you know, not answering the right question, right? I think the other thing we see with clients is that they, they didn't think about how all the pieces are going to fit together, right? Maybe they didn't think about how are we going to scale our data up and down and as we're ingesting all of it, how are our different pieces going to fit together? Um, and this is maybe just driven by the lack of expertise because they maybe didn't have the right people in place. Um, and it's the, you know, the 21st century, right? So security and privacy are always something at the forefront. On the flip side, I think the clients that implement a modern data platform really well, they've sat down and they said, all right, what, do, what is our vision for our data and our business? And then what is each individual piece we need to get there from start to finish? So we view our modern data platform as really, we really bridge this gap between your tech needs and your data, right? This is where your business people can come together and say, all right, these are the, the questions we want to answer. This is you know, the ML models and everything that we want to build, right? And now your tech people can say, all right, great. We have one cozy sub platform from start to finish where we can work with you you know, show you, you know, the, the different information and, and data points you want to collect, support that from ingestion and cleaning all the way to where we're then feeding that out now to Power BI and Tableau, right? With our modern data platform, we're really encouraging an iterative approach, right? So, you know, we're emphasizing that time to market, making sure we're getting all of our business and tech people in that room, figuring out the problem, and then iteratively scaling up and up and up so that we now have a whole expansive uh, data ecosystem for everybody to work in. So our modern data platform is a service catalog, right? And we can offer it to you in three different ways. The first way is that we'll give you our reference architecture, right? So you can get an understanding of, all right, what are all the different pieces we're using for ingestion, cleaning, how are we fitting in Databricks and all of our other technologies together? And then you now have a lot of freedom to go ahead and implement this in your cloud, in your tenant, the way you want to. The second way we'll do this for you is uh, we'll give you our Terraform modules. So like I said, I've done a lot of work uh, managing our Terraform inf infrastructure. So we can go ahead and give this to you and you can actually deploy it on your tenant. Um, we'll be there along you know, the way to complete to help you and assist you. Um, but now it's on your tenant and you have you know, complete control and oversight of it. So you have you know, the, the, the comfortability of that. The third way we'll give you our modern data platform is that we'll actually host it for you on our tenant, right? So again, we'll deploy the Terraform infrastructure, but we already have a lot of the foundational pieces in place. So we're really able to quickly accelerate you to market get you ready to go, and then give you the access you need to go ahead and have your cloud. Um, the other thing we have is a whole bunch of different services, right? So we have analytics, integration, data science. We have development and engineering teams who are super knowledgeable with Databricks and the rest of our tech stack across Azure. So we can be there right along the way, helping with all your different challenges. And the great thing about being KPMG is that we have a whole bunch of different partnerships with different companies who are giving us access to their data. And in turn, we can turn around and give that to you, right? One example of this is that we're actually using uh, Unity Catalog and Delta Sharing to, to have access to S&P Global's ESG data. And the great thing about this is, you know, we can now again give you access to this and support things like our ESG Accelerator. Uh, we will have a presentation at 510 over on stage number three. So if you want to hear more about our S&P uh, Delta Sharing initiative, please come and see that. Now, our, my use case today, uh, we're going to be talking about IoT analytics and manufacturing, but I want to emphasize that we support a whole bunch of different clients, a bunch of whole different, uh, bunch of different industries, and a plethora of different use cases, right? So just because you, know, you maybe don't see your specific application here doesn't mean that we don't support it. We'd love to see you at booth number 724 later and, and talk to you about how we can be a real catalyst for change in your data environment. So we found that unplanned downtime in manufacturing costs Fortune 500 firms up to a trillion dollars per year, right? This is going to come because of the fact that they have roughly 800 hours per year of unplanned downtime, 15 hours a week, a little over two hours per day, right? 
most of us probably sit on our laptops, but think about how you would feel if your internet was unexpectedly cutting out all the time and you, know, you weren't prepared to download files or anything like that. Now you're waiting until your internet service provider gets you back online and, and, and you're a bit lost. The costs for downtime are gonna to spiral to well over $260,000 per hour because now you have your machine operators standing by idle waiting to get back online. You've got your products waiting, you know, not going anywhere because they're not going into machines. You've got clients who are getting a little antsy, right? They want their product and you're now rushing in your service and maintenance people, so they're gonna be jacking up those costs for you, right? On the flip side, we find that companies that implement some sort of a predictive maintenance plan see an average reduction in their costs of 25 to 30%. So we think this is a great opportunity to implement IoT or Internet of Things, right? With IoT, we're connecting a whole bunch of Internet-enabled devices, and in some applications, you can be pushing information or commands to these devices, uh, but in our case of predictive analytics, we're actually collecting uh, data off of all these different machines and, and getting all those readings, right? When you're implementing an IoT solution though, you're opening up the door to a whole bunch of other challenges. You're gonna to need to think about how we're gonna process, interpret, and operationalize all of this data. There's gonna be a lot of data constantly coming in. It can be you know, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes, right? So we're gonna need a system that can go ahead and scale up and down and, and be able to handle all of this different data as it's constantly streaming in. So you're gonna need that uptime 24 seven. With IoT, you're gonna be collecting information from a whole bunch of different machines. So you're gonna to need to consider how are we handing our structured data, our unstructured data, our semi-structured data, we're gonna to need a plan to be able to bring that together and really give us one unified picture of what's going on across our environment. You're gonna to wanna to think about the veracity of this data, right? So you might have some interference with your wireless connections coming from you know, different machines in a plant. You might just have bad internet you know, communications overall. So we're gonna need a plan of how we're gonna handle those errors when we have significant gaps or corrupted messages coming from our, our different IoT messages. In any data solution in the 21st century, we gotta be thinking about security and governance, right? We don't wanna be opening ourselves up to potential cyber attacks and all the risks that can come with that. Um, and once you have all this you know, security and strong infrastructure in place, it's kinda of hard to have a way where you can support these AI models to get those real-time insights. So we think our IoT Accelerator is the great way to handle this challenge, and we're using Databricks and the Databricks Lake House to support this, right? We're using Sparkstream to give you a scalable and performance solution that allows you, allows you to analyze all of your data in near real time and give you those machine learning model predictions. Thanks to Spark, you're able to ingest, process, and transform all this data performantly at scale. Thanks to Databricks Lakehouse, we have the reliability, the strong governance, and the performance that you come to know and love from a data warehouse, while also having the openness, the flexibility, and the machine learning capabilities of a data lake. The solution that I'm showing you today can be applied across any uh, environment where you can use IoT streaming for pre preventative maintenance in domains such as mining, remote sensing, medical devices, network security, anything in that field is, is a great application for our accelerator. Now, I also want to emphasize that IoT can be applied to more than just manufacturing. I think it's a safe bet to say that probably every one of you in this room has a cell phone on you right now, right? Most of you probably have a smartwatch or some other internet capable device you know, on your person besides just your cell phone. And you probably got here with some form of public transportation, right? Maybe a plane, maybe you took an Uber, anything in this category of, you know, cars and trucks and things that go, right? These are all great applications for us to go ahead and figure out how we can glean these natural insights from the data in the world around us. So our use case today is looking at detecting faults in ion mill etching tools used during the semiconductor fabrication process. Basically, we're manufacturing computer chips. We have these silicon wafers that we need to cut up and then create all the little tracks for our semiconductors to go ahead and, and you know, do what they do. Um, and we are gonna then collect all the data from the machines as these are going through um, and make sure that our, our measurements for all of our products is coming off in the right shape. We're gonna wanna make sure that we have real-time mass consumption of our machine events by leveraging Azure Event Hubs. We're gonna need a way to seamlessly extract, clean, and transform all of our machine data. We're gonna use Databricks Lakehouse to have a performant and scalable storage solution. And then of course, we're gonna want those machine learning predictions of all of our etching tools, health status. And then we're going on a dashboard, right? Because if you just have a bunch of data, it's kind of hard to figure out what's going on. But when we give ourselves a clean picture that we can quickly look at and analyze our problem, we're able to get to our solution faster. The outcome of our solution is that we have a real-time view of each etching uh, tool's operating characteristics and all the telemetry information uh, for our product. And we're able to predict the time to failure for each machine. So basically how long we have from this exact moment in time to the point where our machine is you know, code red and we're rushing in people to, to operate it and get it back up online. So for a second, I'm gonna put you in the shoes of a plant operator, right? So if you wanna know what's going on with your plant, 
This is the view that we give you from our, our Tableau dashboard. On the top there, you're able to see the individual uh, variants from the target measurement of each product it's coming off, uh, that's coming off the line. So in blue, we have our individual measurements and our red is a three hour moving average, very similar to like the seven day rolling averages we used to have for COVID cases, right? In the bottom, you're able to go ahead and just get an overall view of, all right, how many of my machines are healthy? How many are critical? You know, how many need attention? And in the bottom right there, you're able to see the individual measurements or the number of measurements we have coming off of each machine. If you're a plan operator, you're also probably gonna to wanna to know, you know, what specific machines are giving me problems, uh, you know, continually, and what are the typical issues that are coming up from this machine? So on this view, you're able to go ahead and filter by specific tool, specific type of issue arising. You're able to get a breakdown of all your specific faults. And in the bottom there, you can go ahead and actually dig into an individual data point, you know, pretty quickly if you wanna do that as well. So this is our architecture from start to finish. First, we have our IoT data generation. For this use case that we're showing you, we're simulating our IoT events. So we have a file that's being blob dropped into our Azure storage blob. This event is gonna trigger our Azure function, which is gonna go ahead and stream all these raw events, the Azure event hubs. From there, we're gonna go ahead and ingest and transform all of our data. So Azure event hubs is gonna stream all these event information into our Databricks medallion architecture, right? And we're using Spark Streaming to adjust that. So we're using the medallion architecture, your bronze, silver, and gold tables. First, we're bringing it into our bronze table. This is where we have our historical archive of source, complete data lineage, and auditability, so we can reprocess this if we have any issues downstream. Uh, from there, we're gonna use our silver spark stream to go ahead and read from the bronze table, transform all the events, drop duplicates, add any derived columns, like our three hour rolling average uh, as necessary, and load this data into our silver table, right? Because we're using Spark, any operation that you come to know and love is something that we can naturally support here. Uh, Spark is also giving us exactly once fault tolerant guarantees, and because we're using Databricks workflows, we have fault tolerant retries, so you know there's pretty consistent data there. Uh, and we are using Delta Lake as well, so we're guaranteeing those acid transactions, scalable metadata handling, schema enforcement, time travel, which I think is a great tool for our data scientists, right? As this data is gonna be constantly streaming and changing, we wanna make sure that they're able to get reproducible results so they can look at a consistent view of the, of the data over time, and they can upsert all of their data as well. From there, we go into our machine learning model and failure prediction page. This is where we're gonna actually generate our ML model and go ahead and get those insights uh, of what we think is gonna happen to our machines, and we now have it ready as consumption data, consumption ready data for our business use cases, right? We're taking that three hour computed moving average on the sensor data, and we're retrieving our features from the Databricks feature store, joining this with our enriched data from our silver table and producing our machine learning model input. Thanks to Databricks ML Flow, we're managing the versioning, experiments, and the deployments of our, all of our models, which is gonna accelerate our machine learning modeling process. Um, throughout all this, we're able to create initial models and you know, have a whole bunch of experiments over time as maybe our, our situation changes around our plan. Our machine learning model is gonna generate the time to failure prediction classes for each machine. And now we're again, we're using Spark Search Streaming to go ahead and load all this data into our curated gold table. Lastly, we're gonna go ahead and serve all of our curated data to our end users. This is where we're gonna go ahead and support the Tableau dashboard that I was showing you all earlier. Thanks to uh, Databricks' connections with Tableau, we're actually able to directly query on to our Databricks lake house via the SQL warehouse. Um, so we are using Spark SQL. And we're facilitating a live connection to go ahead and ingest all of that data. Again, any uh, sort of transformation or calculation that you've come to know and love from Spark is something that we can do here because we're naturally you know, using Apache Spark. Your Tableau dashboard is giving you the real-time machine telemetry data and the health forecast for each machine via a time series graph. And you have tables with varying levels of filters like I was showing you earlier, right? You're able to go ahead and look at past machine fault occurrences and the reported sensor values at the time of failure for each machine via a, uh, a separate table that can go ahead and be queried with filters. And we have the reliability engineering, right? So now our machine operators can get the visibility into their ongoing operations. They can proactively plan maintenance to get ahead of things before you know, machines go down and we can be predicting, again, when those machines are at a critical health level. Because we're able to go back and look at the historical fault uh, data, we're able to understand our failure trends, view machine faults at a granular level, and get the full understanding of that, right? We now have a past, present, and future view of our machines, and we're able to get that full understanding of what's going on with our plants. The other great thing about our gold tables, right, is that this is always ready for business uh, consumption data. So if you have your C-suite or somebody coming up with an ad hoc query, you're able to quickly you know, go to your goal table. You don't have to go and find some crazy join. You know that it's all ready to go. So what have we accomplished? We've taken our plan operators from reactive to proactive, right? We've enabled them to uh, get ahead of their maintenance needs and fix their problems before they arise. 
we're allowing them to process over 400,000 rows of data across three tables in less than three minutes. We're giving our plant operators a real-time view and insight into their plant's operating through their Tableau dashboard, and we're helping them save up to a trillion dollars a year by eliminating up to 800 hours of downtime, which can cost them over $260,000 per hour. Uh, so thank you so much for being here. We'd love to see you at booth number 724 to talk about how we can support you in all of your data needs. And also come see us again later at 510 on stage three to hear about Delta sharing. And with that, I think we have some time for questions.